A few months ago, I was traveling the world making videos for my online classes. One month with my friends in Papua New Guinea, where I've worked for 20 years. A few weeks in Vietnam for the Lunar New Year. Thailand to reconnect with our exchange daughter Jane. And then to India to explore Hinduism with Krishna. For the first time I was asked to teach online, I wasn't very excited. I think because I was thinking of it as an online class. Uh, I think I failed to realize that online could mean out in the world. It was the result of four years of planning, practicing, and experimenting with ways to move my online class more and more out into the world. Do you have internet, man? To free both myself and my students from the screen. That was super awesome. The first monk I ever talked to in my whole life. For Facebook friends, that's pretty amazing. And to explore what's possible without the limits of the walls of the classroom. Get okay. <laughs> or the traditional expectations of what a class should be. In this episode, I want to invite you to think about what it would look like to move your online class out into the world. Oh, it's up yeah. <laughs> to take your students on at least one adventure this coming semester by making a video that involves an authentic, unscripted encounter with the world. It might not look like this for you. Your adventure might be in a lab, a studio, an office, or a workshop. It's anywhere that you can demonstrate your practice. This is by far the hardest thing I've ever asked you to try. So let's just start off by reviewing three reasons you will not want to do this and why you should do it anyway. Number one, there is no adventure to be had anywhere near you. I think an adventure can be had anytime, anywhere, and in any discipline. Just try something new, talk to someone different from you, take your students into your lab, studio, or workshop, take them on a tour, a job shadow, or dive into a key text, some archives, or a real life case study. Take them anywhere where you encounter the true adventure of your discipline, someplace where you can model your process. One of my first adventures was just right down the street to meet up with uh, a former Southern Baptist pastor, just started his own new church. What's up? <laughs> One of the cool things we can do is like, we can pan way out and it actually looks like we're running on a little ball. Number two, no time. It's true, this will take a lot of time, and you probably aren't ready to produce one per week, but even just one this next semester can make a big difference. I remember just watching it and I was like dumbfounded because I don't have that skill to be with someone that I'm completely different than and still have that open conversation in the way they did. It made me want to learn more and it gave me the confidence to talk to people that are much, much different than me. Number three, no skills. Just remember that we're all on this journey and it's a long road. Every time you try, you get a little bit better. I like to keep all of my work in a folder called practice. It reminds me that even if the project fails and flops, it's still practice and I'm getting a little better every day. So let's get started. You might remember from an earlier video, I mentioned that the best storytellers are always looking for a hook, an angle, a big idea, or what Jessica Abel calls the why. In Jessica Abel's formula, the X is what your story is about. The Y is why it will be interesting to your students. A syllabus typically lists a bunch of X's, topics. But looking more closely, we find that each topic is itself made up of X's, key concepts and big ideas. As we teach, we try to make these things interesting with examples, stories, and fascinating facts, adding Y's each time we teach. For this project, you'll want to zoom in on one of your favorite XY combinations, something especially important or especially interesting. I've decided to make a video about the impact of technology through the example of life without shoes. This is still a work in progress, but let me take you behind the scenes and give you five tips for making your own adventure video. Welcome to the Neem River Valley in Papua New Guinea. This is Tomobil, one of the most remote airstrips in the country, and as you can see, I'm walking around barefoot. So notice that I'm trying to establish what the video is about, both audibly and visually, right from the beginning. So this is named Tomobil. The word tomb means stone. This entire valley is just full of really hard and sharp stones. And as a result, they have some of the toughest feet around. I chose this not just because it is a compelling example, but also because I knew I would be back in New Guinea with friends I've known for 20 years. Look ahead on your calendar and try to find some key opportunities for a great adventure. You may not be traveling the world anytime soon, but once you start looking, you'll see all kinds of opportunities. And you can start planning with specific people in mind, thinking up videos that will be fun for all of you. 
Lanson, who I've known since he was born, was my inspiration for having children. His brother David was caught by my wife as he entered the world in this very spot. And aside from being some of the most important people in my life, they've always dazzled me with their barefoot agility. I wanted to explore this and see if I could learn something from them that could help me get some of that same agility. So I started sketching the outlines of a video I thought would be really fun for all of us. Once you start filming, you just have to go with the story, but you at least know that your story will have a beginning, a middle, and an end. So you'll know you'll need an intro and an outro, and you can use this basic structure to sketch out everything in between. Try to brainstorm some kind of challenge or natural storyline. I had the idea of racing David, then training for three weeks, and then racing him again. Pena. You can then add a B story that can add depth and significance to the A story. In this case, I want to tell the story of science and discovery that has led so many to consider the virtues of going barefoot. Something like, look at the amazing feats that they can do with their amazing feats. How do they do it? Can I do it? Here's what we know. And here's what I discover. Look at how big his muscles are in his toes. Amazing, right? Strong boy, mom. Mom seems sue you. <laughs> the fourth tip is to embrace the visual medium and show, don't just tell. Instead of just telling my students that it's mesmerizing to watch them walk through the bush, I can let them be mesmerized. YouTube will marry by walk about I'll send him something, nothing, nah. Yeah. Me yeah. no holy one will something that's all me by I no walk about. They're walking down the mountain with two giant logs, a big bag of firewood, and it's no trouble at all. I'm walking with a GoPro. <laughs> and me get some time yeah. The fifth and most important tip is just to be present with the people around you and model your practice. And if you're distracted by your technology, you're not gonna be present. That's why my favorite camera for something like this is the GoPro Max. It's super simple and super stable. I'm rotating it right now, but it actually keeps me uh, steady. And that's exactly what you need when you're out in the field and trying to pay attention to the people around you rather than paying attention to the camera and making sure that it's getting the right shot. So I love this thing. I can also put it on 360 mode here. And this is how I do most of my interviews because then I don't have to pay attention to the camera at all. I know that it's capturing both me and the person I'm interviewing and the audio is getting everything as well. So it's just like kind of the camera I don't have to think about. For an adventure video, it's perfect. So typically I'll use this and then I've got my little RX100 here, which gives me all the sort of pretty shots that you see. And between these two cameras, I can pretty much do everything that I want. And it's super lightweight and easy. You know, I spend a lot of time parenting as I'm doing these. So, you know, hauling a six-year-old on my shoulders while carrying these is a lot easier than carrying a big pack with a professional camera. George is out of gas. So we are shouldering. An adventure video can actually be a lot more than just a great X and Y. It can reveal the most important lessons of your class. Okay, ready? This is your chance to show your students the animating spirit of your discipline and a chance for you to think deeply about what you think that animating spirit should be. Oh, I'm getting better. As an anthropologist, I want my students to know that there are a lot of things we can learn from other people in other places. I want them to know that humans have more potential than they might realize, and with practice, they might unlock some of this potential. I want them to see the big picture and notice the little things too. I want them to have a sense of wonder for the world and to embrace and celebrate the difference. I want them to continue the great conversation of what it is to be human. <laughs> Knowing that this conversation cannot be had alone but it should be had with all the world. So what will you be teaching this next semester?
Big thanks to AQ for sponsoring this video. AQ provides outstanding micro-credential courses and effective teaching practices. And this video is just one small part of their new course on effective online teaching practices, which will launch this June.